This video is sponsored by Surfshark. I have to say, I wasn't expecting Netflix to renew Selling the OC for not only a second but a third season as well, but honestly, I'm glad that they did. Compared to the plethora of reality TV shows that Netflix has been giving us, more specifically reality shows about realtors, this has to be in my top two. And I'm sure you can guess what the other one is. I don't like two-faced people, and I'm not saying you are two-faced, but it's going that direction, and I was like, oh wow. wow. Selling the OC is actually very unique compared to other reality shows because the villains of the show are actually the good guys, and the good guys are, well, crazy. Alex, Paul, you're not gonna listen? Wow. Your voice is annoying me. If you remember anything about last season, you know that 90% of the show was drama instigated by Alex Hall, Polly, and this girl whose name I cannot remember at all. Meanwhile, the other 10% was Alex Rose and Alexandra Jarvis selling houses, aka just doing their jobs, which is originally what the show is supposed to be about, but apparently that's a problem for everyone else. You may wonder why I don't speak to you anymore, why I unfollowed you on Instagram, because I felt like you have this this superiority about yourself. No, not at all. Another significant plot point of season one was the cheating scandal with Kayla and Tyler, which was super weird because we saw none of it happen on camera and only the aftermath, so it left us as the audience with a lot of questions. But from what I can remember, Kayla made a move on Tyler, who was married at the time, and he's divorced now, so I think it's safe to say that Kayla wasn't the problem. And as a result, the entire office turned on Kayla, and by the entire office, I mean Alex Hall and Polly. The rest were just doing their jobs. But the thing is, Kayla was like best friends with Polly, Polly and Alex Hall when she first started out, but somehow her trying to kiss Tyler made them the victim. Like, even after Tyler quote-unquote forgave Kayla, they still made it about them. And it was sort of at that point that I just couldn't take Alex and Polly seriously anymore. I knew that they were causing drama just for the sake of the show. It's done. It's over with. I will apologize to Tyler, but moving forward, I would appreciate if you girls just stop talking about it. There's also Geo, who honestly reminds me of a Minecraft kid, but he flexes way too much, and it's honestly kind of cringe. I am the top dog here at the Oppenheim Group. I am a fucking rock star. And then there's Austin and Brandy, who might as well not even be in the show because they appear in like less than one scene and contribute almost nothing in terms of sales or drama. So we'll see if that changes this season. And finally, the stars of the show, Alex Jarvis and Alex Rose. Jesus, there is a lot of Alexes I almost forgot. And no matter how much the producers of selling the OC try to convince me that Alex and Alex are the villains, I won't believe it. Because anyone with common sense can see that they are the least problematic of the Oppenheim group, and for some reason, Alex Hall has made it her life's mission to go after them. They mind their own business and are easily the most successful in the group, and everyone hates them for it. And the season closes off with Jarvis and Rose selling a house for $20 million, which is absolutely insane. I mean, good for them, they deserve it more than anyone. But Alex Hall and Polly think otherwise. Which brings us to season two. And if you're looking for a way to watch Selling the OC so you know exactly what I'm talking about, be sure to check out Surfshark, the sponsor of today's video. Surfshark offers you an incredibly powerful VPN that keeps your online identity safe from hackers and your personal data safe from companies. It is the only way to instantaneously virtually travel to any country around the globe. And considering there are viewing restrictions based on what country you're in, a VPN is essential when you're using streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, or Apple TV+. I mean, how else do you think I watch The Idol? And if you're based outside of the US, you can connect to a US VPN using Surfshark in order to access Hulu, which is only available in the States. And if you're located anywhere else, you can access any Netflix library in the world. Countries like Japan, South Korea, and even India have access to hundreds of movies and shows that aren't available in America. For example, if you use Netflix while your location is based in South Korea, you can watch Megan, which is not available anywhere else. And you already know how great I think that movie is. Or if you connect to a VPN in Brazil, you can access every Marvel and non-Marvel Spider-Man movie. With the click of a button, you can quickly quadruple the content that you have access to. And if you use my code Danny's Reviews, you can get an extra three months of Surfshark for free. They also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. The link is in the description below. Thank you, Surfshark. Immediately, we start off with Alex Hall and Tyler meeting up for what I assumed was a date. How's it going? Better now. Better now that I'm here? Oh, never mind, it's just a house showing. And to my surprise, he actually even addresses his divorce, and to no surprise, he takes little accountability in his part for it. Come on. <laughs> my is gonna pop out! Yeah, so before we even get into this, how can they act like this five minutes into season two, yet Kayla gets totally berated for doing basically the same thing in season one? During the first team meeting, Jason says that they're gonna be starting an office in Cabo, and Alex Rose takes this as an opportunity to throw shade at Tyler. How did you get the listing in the montage? Uh, my dad originally sold it to the owner. Wish I had a daddy like that. <laughs> 
And honestly, rightfully so, considering Tyler called her the fakest person in the group last season. You guys are bullies. You're fucking bullies. Not to mention Alex Hall and Kayla are still beefing, but that was expected. Slowly, we start to see that the entire office sees something between Alex Hall and Tyler, and they make little jokes here and there. I actually showed it to Hall yesterday. Power couple. <laughs> but a part of me doesn't think that they're joking. And while most of the group is uncomfortable with the whole thing, for some reason, Polly is super pro Tyler and Alex Hall. But meanwhile, Brandy is for once not on their side. So fucking what? They're friends. They're both single. Like, what? Like, he's what's not. The he is. They're separated. They're not divorced. So what? She's trying to talk some common sense into Polly, but Polly is just instigating and encouraging them to cheat. Eventually, Alex, Rose, and Jarvis go door knocking, and Rose seems to do some slight flirting with the client. And surprisingly, Jarvis gets really offended by this. Sometimes she can be a little unprofessional. And in my opinion, no harm, no foul. I mean, the client seemed happy enough, and it was just some small talk. But little did I know that this conversation would be the beginning of the end for these two. But we'll get into that later. Tyler eventually confronts Brandy about what she said about him and Alex, and very quickly it goes from 0 to 100. And maybe Brandy is overstepping a little bit, but she does have somewhat of a point that this is messy for the group and there's literally no way that this ends well. And considering Alex Hall is literally fighting for her life, I'm gonna make the assumption that she has a crush on Tyler and that's the whole reason that she got mad at Kayla in season 1. At Tyler's open house, the conversation between Brandy and Alex Hall continues, and as usual, Alex Jarvis is the only one speaking truth. They're okay with airing their opinions all the time. So I do think that some people can dish it out and they just can't take it. The way Jarvis and Rose and Kayla were ostracized in season 1 for something that Hall and Polly do all the time makes no sense. But unfortunately, it does not end there. Kayla, who I should add has literally nothing to lose at this point, drops the biggest bombshell in selling OC history. Him and Polly at the office. Making out. Polly and Tyler were making out in the office. Bro, what is going on? Why is everyone trying to get with Tyler, and why is Kayla the only one who gets heat for it? Also, why does this stuff keep happening off camera? I don't know what to believe anymore. Kayla decides that she's gonna stand up for herself and confront Polly about the way that she's been treated, and at Geo's party, that's exactly what happens. Kayla finally confronts Polly, and Polly is immediately super defensive. She tries to deny it at first, but eventually admits what happened, and Tyler goes to confront Kayla. But Kayla isn't taking any of this. She's just obliterating everyone. And there's a lot of hypocrisy going on What's the and I'm not gonna fucking put up with that. You can tell that Polly and Tyler don't want their hookup to get out, but considering everything that they did last season, it's only a matter of time. Tyler storms out and tells Jason that they hired the wrong agents, even though he's always the one causing problems. We hired the wrong agents. Yes, yes. Where are you going, Walked out and said that I hired the wrong agents. And Kayla starts telling everyone at the party the truth about Polly and Tyler. Why is this so satisfying to watch? Everyone being involved in drama that they have no reason to be a part of, this is why I cannot wait for season 3. Eventually, Polly and Alex Hall talk about the makeout, and they're weirdly both into it. Like, there's no other way for me to describe it. Alex Hall did seem a little bit jealous at first, but by the end, they're basically plotting to each get their way with him, and I'm just wondering what happened to selling houses. At the office, Polly tries to downplay the hell out of her hookup with Tyler, but no one is really letting it slide. And then Alex has the audacity to say this. Why is everybody so involved? with everybody's personal lives. Right, we should be focusing on selling real estate. Bro, we've been asking you that since season one. Eventually, this girl, Allie from Nashville, joins, but she has legit no realtor experience. Well, her name is actually Alex, but if we have four Alexes on the show, it will for sure get canceled, so we just go by Allie. And I mean, she seems nice and all, but she really serves no real purpose to season two, so there isn't that much to say. Eventually, Alex Hall, Polly, Tyler, and Austin are all having dinner, and they spend the entire time talking crap about Kayla and how crazy she is. And honestly, this conversation really solidifies how Alex Hall and Polly are the true villains of the show. No matter who else may instigate drama here and there, it's always them at the root of it. However, just a few moments later, to my disappointment, Jarvis drops the biggest bombshell that her and Rose aren't even that close of friends. We're not close friends. Which honestly, I just don't agree with. Like, come on, you guys are a power duo. They're literally the only two people who can successfully sell houses, and now they're having a falling out? Don't do this to me, Jarvis, I trusted you. But still, it does not end there. Because one day Alex Hall is saying that Rose tried to steal her client, to which Jarvis completely throws Rose under the bus. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me. Jarvis, enough. Regardless, Hall confronts Rose and she completely denies it. And honestly, I believe her. I don't need to know anything else. And because everything goes around the office, Rose decides to confront Jarvis about throwing her under the bus and not standing up for her, and Rose really sets the record straight. I would never, ever, 
ever lie to you or ever cheat. However, it does not end well, and as much as I like Jarvis and Rose, they're beginning to turn into Alex Hall and Polly 2.0. Jason decides to take the group to Cabo to open up the new office, but he has one rule, no drama. But I think it's safe to say that that promise will not be kept. By the time that they get to Cabo, everyone is fighting. Alex Hall and Kayla hate each other, Rose and Jarvis aren't on speaking terms, and Polly is just unbearable. To which Jarvis and Rose go at it during dinner, and it made me really sad. Eventually, Alex Hall and Tyler have a heart-to-heart, -heart, which seems a little bit out of pocket, but whatever. He opens up about what happened to Polly and confirms that he'll never have a relationship with her and that he has no feelings towards her. And Alex Hall is happy to say the least. Did you kiss my neck? Don't act, don't act like it's the first time. But then the real drama happens during their last night. The tension has been brewing between Alex Hall and Brandy ever since she called her out for being close with Tyler, and meanwhile, Kayla is up to no good. She's slowly becoming my new favorite because she's in her revenge era and she just starts saying that Alex Hall and Tyler were making out. And things get really heated for absolutely no reason here, and I'm not trying to argue who's right and who's wrong, but technically Kayla did start it, but rightfully so. Finally, back in Orange County, you'd think things would get better, but no, they get worse. Polly and Jarvis get into a fight during a work meeting, and Polly sounds absolutely crazy. I just find it very interesting that when there is evidence of you not being this- She tells Jarvis that she's two-faced when they're not even friends to begin with, and Jarvis is totally coming for her and winning the argument, but Polly just won't stop. The fight turns into a free-for-all where somehow everyone gets involved, and again, they all turn on Brandy. Like what? I just don't understand what she even had to do with this. This always happens whenever they get in group fights, they end up just spiraling out of control, but like I said, the common denominator is Polly. Always has been, and always will be. And through a couple more fights that happened during the last episode, the season ends with Tyler and Alex Hall basically confessing their feelings for one another, and they kiss. Oh god. Honestly wishing them the best, but I have a feeling that things will not be smooth sailing in season 3, considering their history. Be sure to check out Surfshark in the description below.